What's up y'all, Jack Dawkins here, and today I'm gonna to be sharing some of uh, my story. Now, if you're here, it's probably because you saw a snippet or a, a clip or a reel about me talking about the, the power of the process of storytelling. Um, and for me, I know that to be true because it's been such a huge part of my life, but I figured giving a tangible example of what it looks like in practice would be more helpful than me just telling you about the process in abstract. So I'm gonna tell you about how I kind of went through my career and how storytelling played a role in that. So I started in restaurants and like a lot of people in the industry, I did basically every job there is to do. I was a dishwasher, bartender, maitre d', beverage director, server, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I love the industry, I still do. I have such a deep affection for hospitality and restaurant work. But at some point I came to a conclusion, which may not have been my own, that hospitality work and settling down with a family were incongruent. They couldn't coexist. And so I decided to pivot. And so the first thing that I did was I decided to consult for restaurants. I would take that 10 years of knowledge and I would apply it through a consulting lens to support other businesses. Now, the good news is it worked. I was able to get jobs relatively quickly doing that. The bad news is it sucked. I hate consulting. Um, and it's not that there's anything wrong with consulting, it's that I miss the buzz and the energy and the excitement of the floor. I miss the movement. All the things about restaurants that I love didn't feel present in this new work, and so that wasn't a great fit. So I decided, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna leave restaurants, I'm gonna go to a new industry and get a new job. And in doing that, I learned how ridiculously hard it is to change industries, particularly as you're approaching 30 years old. And so I started to develop a process around researching companies, writing resumes and cover letters, et cetera. And what I ended up doing was recruiting a group of classmates who were all going through the same process and basically making like a little support group. And it was rewarding, it was super fun. A lot of people did end up pivoting in the work they were doing. Um, but again, for me, I found that I was just sitting on the phone and the computer all day, which is just not where I'm happy. I need to move. And so I decided to make a more dramatic pivot and I went to fitness. I've been an athlete my whole life, but I had never done anything remotely related to um, pursuing fitness as a profession and certainly not in supporting other people in that way. And what I found fascinating about fitness is that when you're coaching a class like Orange Theory, which is where I worked for a period of time, you're basically performing. Like, yes, you have to run the nuts and bolts and get the clock right and show people the exercises, but at the end of the day, you're pulling people through an experience that in many cases they don't really want to have. They know it's good for them, they know there are benefits, but they know that the experience is also hard. And so how do you create energy as a coach, as an entertainer, as a performer, that keeps them motivated, that keeps them excited to make it all the way to the end of the class so they can get that reward. Now things were starting to rattle and hum. Now it was getting more fun. And as much as I loved it, the piece I realized that was a problem was I looked at all the paths of where I could go and none of them felt exciting. I didn't want to run a gym, I didn't want to start my own, I didn't want to be a fitness influencer. I kind of liked doing the classes, but I was hungry for more and I didn't quite know where to go with it. And so I made another pivot. I decided to try storytelling. I knew that I liked performing and I thought that maybe if I could try a new angle on that, something might spark. And it did. I was in Chicago, which is where Second City is. Second City, if you don't know, is a wildly famous improv theater that has sent tons of people to SNL and a bunch of writing rooms on all the big network shows. And they offered storytelling classes. So I took the class and at the end you get your like seven minute little showcase thing. Um, and it was great. Like friends and family are there, you get the golf clap, it's very nice. But I went up to my teacher afterward and said, how do you turn this into an hour? Like that was a story. How do you make a story into a show? And what he told me was you get a director and you rent a space and you work your ass off, you put up a show. So that was March and in August I rented a space, I got a director and I put on a show and it was amazing. It was like for the, for the first time in a very long time, I found moments of this with restaurants, but I felt so lucky to be doing what I was doing. And I know a lot of people say, chase your dreams or chase your passion. Like the sensation of feeling lucky to do something that is not easy or comfortable was new to me. And that felt like such a clear signal to follow. So after that first show got performed at two or three theaters, I wrote a second show and that was in the middle of a run at Second City and then COVID. 
So all theaters shut down. And I tried some of the online pivots that other people did, online storytelling, stand-up, poetry, etc. And I, there was no connection. Again, I was back to just sitting in front of a computer. I missed the live element. And I couldn't solve that entirely because, you know, the world shut down. But I asked the question, how can I make a story that people can consume digitally that still feels good to receive? Music. Music and storytelling have gone hand in hand forever. And particularly hip hop, which I gravitated toward, has such a rich history of storytelling. And I'm so grateful that I get to be a part of that tradition and continue to contribute to it. So those were the nuts and bolts steps. But the thing that I want you to pay attention to, when I started that process, I was operating on stories that I didn't write. Consulting is a very logical step to go from restaurant work if you want to continue in that line. That makes sense. Except I could have told you before I started that consulting was never going to be a good fit. There's no energy. There's no movement. You're stuck at a desk. Same thing with the career coaching. Again, I found a pain point. I found a problem that people need help with. I decided to build a business around that because it makes sense, because it's logical. And again, the result was disappointing. Very disappointing. Fitness, I started to really listen to like, what do I like to do? What's my energy? How do I want to show up in this world? And even though I certainly didn't get paid a lot of money, and it was very humbling as a 30-year-old with two degrees to be waking up at 4.30 in the morning to do a 5 a.m. fitness class, I had a lot more fun. And I felt way more fulfilled than some of the other work that I'd done that was certainly better paid. And then storytelling was yet another extension of that. It's like, I want to perform. I want to fucking put myself out there. I want to speak from here more. And so when I talk about the process of storytelling, I'm talking about taking those ideas, that logical brain that we like to use to explain how to make choices, and you don't have to get rid of it, but maybe just turn the volume down. Because when you turn the volume down on those old stories, you start to reveal the stories that are true the ones that are really, really authentic to you, the ones that when you follow them, they bring you fucking joy and abundance and life. I want you to feel alive. This is the thing. If you pursue this process, it's not going to have a big effect on me. I'll celebrate you. I'll watch you. But at the end of the day, I want you to do this process for you. I want you to take the stories that you're tired of telling yourself and fucking put them down because you don't need to carry them anymore. And I want you to write something new, something that feels true in your body, in your bones, in your words, because that's where I think the cool shit happens. I, I've done this process for long enough now that I finally, I turned it into a little book. It's called Be Seen, Be Heard, Be Seen Again. And it's about the process of connecting to your story and sharing it in a way that allows life to orient itself in a way that it can serve you. It's free. I want you to have it. I want you to dive into this process. And as you go through it, if you're excited, if you're scared or you're nervous, tell me. I want to see you in this process. I want to celebrate you in this process because I think the change can be amazing. I'll see you out there.